Good morning, beloved people. My reading I've chosen for this morning is taken from the book A Master's Reflection on the History of Humanity, Part 1, by Ramtha. The piece I'm reading is called Experience is Never a Mistake, but the Seed of Wisdom. Now ignorance, the mother of devotion, in some understanding is the lack of motivation. To be motivated to know that you do not consume an unlimited mind, only to find danger and fear and insecurity there. Those are the things that you already know. They no longer exist in the unknown. The courage to take the step to change. People in the ancient schools went to school for seven long years, each year dedicated to one level of evolution and one page to learn that they may change and that they may evolve. Don't you know evolving consciousness is what this is all about? An evolving consciousness is plucking from the unknown knowledge that you can consume upon to be able to create and change your reality according to what is needed in your life? Yes, but you are afraid and I understand why. I've always endeavoured to understand. No one likes anyone to change out of the status quo. Think of all the people that are alive today. What great entities come to your mind as individuals who burnt away an image? You are truly hard-pressed to start rattling off their names, aren't you? There are a lot of entities that represent the state of consciousness that are exalted. They become the ideals in social consciousness. But there are no Francis's, truly. Now, because the moment you begin to learn, my beautiful people, the moment you are born of the individual within you, the moment you gain knowledge, you start turning lights on. Don't you know why changes are coming and are already here? Because humanity has created the problems and they never went to the next step to expand the consciousness and to resolve them. They got stuck on page three and nature passed them up and they are still stuck raping and pillaging and destroying the life force for their greedy needs. They have not evolved and their consciousness is going to collapse them. That is why. Who do you think? Why do you think the people from the other side of the sun are back? Because there are pockets of people waking up. There are a lot of you in this room that have had contact with the people from beyond the sun. It has been pressed out of your memory until you are ready to learn. And the moment you begin to learn, you send a transmission and there is a natural urgency to get up and move. There is an urgency to go to one place. There is an urgency to start doing things you never did before, putting food up, water up and learning to be sovereign. There is a consuming desire and there is a war that goes within, inside of self that says, but you are changing, you can't do that. And there is a part of you that is saying, I must, I have to, I must. So what would happen if the whole world knew the truth? Well, you wouldn't have to work at making a living because energy is everywhere around you. You would only have to grow the things that feed you. That which you need would be supplied without having to have an enslaving middle class to make commerce a reality. Devoted to people's opinion is living in ignorance. I am a radical. Yes, I am. I am a libertarian. Yes, that is a great truth. But I am for the individual, for the God that is within that has been asleep for so long and hypnotized to be there. And I am a radical of the metaphysical spiritualists. Yes, I am, because they will not address topics that will make them unpopular or controversial because they don't know. They don't have the courage to be a light in the midst of a great and growing storm, a knowledge and truth that gives deliverance to people within their own kingdom, within self, because they don't want to pay the price of ostracism, of bad press. They don't know. But being devoted to ignorance will be your demise. 
as it has been in every lifetime. An evolving soul is fulfilling its destiny in consciousness. And I'm not talking about Mickey Mousing, rickety racketing consciousness. I'm not talking about lightning, lighting candles and wearing crystals and zircons and amulets. And I'm not talking about going on special diets and wearing certain colors or meditating. I'm talking about truth, waking up, understanding a simple, simple truth. That is the reason for everything and taking the focus that is like this and having it like this and taking a healing hand with fire that comes out of it and lift the whole consciousness around the being and being such an immaculate being that wild birds will come and land on your shoulders because if they don't do it now, you haven't dissolved the image. But one day they will, to where nature itself is in alignment with you and where you don't think, I can't. Indeed, you don't think I have a problem here. You don't think I am afraid. You don't think I'm not going to have enough. There is not going to be enough time. You don't sit there and Mickey Mouse and straddling the fence. Well, I think I believe this, but there are times that I don't. That what you think is the reality, and that what you experience gives you the wisdom to grow, to stretch that consciousness that you are not stupid, mystical, mystical people, but that you are in the know, in the knowledge of, understanding of, that you are not ignorant, not enslavable, not destructible, and without fear. They think it is wrong that you shouldn't have fear. Absolutely, because if you don't have that, you can't be manipulated or coerced. If a person has no fear, they cannot be conquered, owned, subjugated, beached and boxed. When you open up people, there is a whole intelligence waiting to make contact with you. There is an extraordinary amount of adventure awaiting you. The unconscious mind, the unknown, is the next adventure to where all of your things can be consumed upon. The mother of devotion is ignorance. Whether it is spiritual ignorance, political ignorance, religious ignorance, it is a disease of the community. It is a disease of humanity. Plagues could not come in the light. They only breed in the darkness. Poverty and war and humaneness do not breed in the light. They breed in the darkness. Brother hating brother, dividing property lines and guarding its borders comes from ignorance. And if you think that going around chanting and living in the crystal is going to make you divine, then you are a fool because you should know better. Because a pure reasoning mind realizes that if the power is within you and it is, then you don't have to power anything outside of you to make within you happen because it is right here there. Physical reality only exists because it is in your realm of focus. When you change that focus, you bring in other realities. You are only as grand as your vision allows you to be. And you are the one that created your vision. Your consciousness is only as explosive as your energy will be. Your body will only hold up as long as you are willing to live. When you give up and cease to learn and change and have the adventures, you will die. Because just like everything in evolution in nature, if it isn't used, it is done away with. It is evolved upon. A living being does not die as long as they are consuming life and that the joy is there. And if you are in the doldrums and you are in the dumps and you are depressed, it is because you made yourself that way, because you got stuck with creating the problem and not creating the purposefulness of it. Because the moment you see the purpose, it gives you up. <coughs> Excuse me. And you expand consciousness. Don't be ignorant that your attitude controls your destiny. And don't be ignorant to think that if you can say, I am God that will manifest it, and you condemn yourself on the other hand, that that isn't going to manifest as well. 
And don't be ignorant to think that whatsoever give you your power away will have power over you. And that means having other people make decisions for you in your life without consulting self. And if you want to learn like the ancient schools were, there is a place to learn and to evolve and to touch an ancient light and to turn the pages very rapidly in this book to transparency. It is there. But don't be devoted to your fear indeed. And don't be devoted to your reticence. And don't be devoted by your worries and wringing of hands and gnashing of teeth and staying up all night and wondering if you should make that decision. You wouldn't have the decision in front of you if you didn't need to experience it. You only experience what you lack inside, people, unless you are ignorant. Then you are in the groove and you just keep experiencing the same old mistakes, the same old opportunities, success and failure, negative and positive, illness and health, over and over and over again. And that becomes your reality. But the moment you start to stretch and do away with your dogmas and your pet peeves and your negative and positives and your evil and your goods and your higher and your lower, the moment you just bring it together and unify consciousness is when you are on your way home. And if something is facing you and is in your life, you have created it. Look at it. What is the emotional gain of the friction? Not how much money you are going to make or lose, but what is it in there that you are forcing and stretching yourself to own? Look at it, that you can own its wisdom in here without creating a collapsing problem and enhance your reality. Go to the next step. Don't step backwards and give it up. Own it, because the moment you look, Say what it is, emotional value, that I'm to record as wisdom here. What have I learned from this? And the moment you focus it, you have stretched consciousness yet again. And the vision is being stretched and you will own it. And it will go in the book and the problem will give you up. And then the entity is growing. It is not ignorant. It is consuming knowledge because the next phase is the next knowledge. Never regret your experiences. Never, ever, ever. Never see anything you make as a mistake. See it as a learning. Don't live in your past for pity's sake. Do not go into the groove and think about what you were in the last lifetime. I know that there are those of you here that like to sneak around and find people to tell you about those things. I've listened. And did you ever hear the, wind, the wind groan? Have you ever heard it? You should have been listening a little closer. Is your life so empty that you have to go back in the past and find a reason for being glorified? Jesus, do you want a man so much that you will try to find a reason in a past life that he should belong to you in this life and then lay the trip on him that it is his karma? I know what you are doing. Don't you understand that you never have a now? The now is being self-aware, the creator, the observer in the present moment. And until you close the book, why do you want to go back to pages 3, 2 and 1? And what image are you going to pick out? I've got a real ear opener for you. You didn't live one life. You had a million of them. Which one are you looking for? Which image do you want? Do you understand? You had innumerable of them, more than you have numbers to count or to figure in your mind without getting a machine to tell you the answer. Why do you have to go back and look at it? I will tell you why. Because people who do have a lack, because they now lacks the adventure of progressive self. They have to go back to yesterday, close the book, because a person should never have to live because of the past. If you are going to look at who you were 10 million lifetimes ago and try to find that glamorous, sweet person, I can show you millions of images, like haunting demons of the times you weren't, primitive, smelly, beastly people, drinkers of blood, eaters of flesh. Now people in ancient wisdom, 
If a person kept alive their past, they kept alive their mistakes. Because the past is really based on mistakes and unrequired joy. But if a person has knowledge, knowingness and wisdom today and is evolving in consciousness, there will be enough joy and high adventure in their life. They will never have to pause to look backwards because it is right here and now. And there are so many of you <clears throat> in this audience that could do without your past and the people that insist on remembering your past when you have endeavored to forget it. They don't need to be part of your reality. They belong to yesterday. That when you close the book on yesterday, there is only one powerful focus and that is now. There is only one progressive and that is now. Ignorance is in yesterday. Knowledge lives in today. Know who you are today. A wonderful, beautiful man, woman, burnt his image away to live for the moment and the glory of that moment. Are you not endowed with the same energy and power to do the same? There is no problem you have created that you can't uncreate by simply looking at it, not avoiding it. When you do, it gives you up. And there is no illness in your body that can't heal when you begin to love what you are. You are a magnificent person. And when you are without a past and have only the wholeness of wisdom, disease has no way to have to catch up to the body. When you stop looking into yesterday, you have cut off the genetic pattern of diseasement and death, so it doesn't exist. It is now that life begins. <clears throat> so be it. What a beautiful reading. I know it was a bit long, but as you will tell, I could not decide what to say and what not to say. Bless you all. Thank you.